Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, for the organization. So I'm, yes, I'm Filippo Mantovani from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. I was involved in the Mont Blanc project that I'm going to present now, and I'm going to give you a little bit the updates from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, the research, one of the research centers involved in, this, in the project. So the, here, the legacy vision of the Mont Blanc project, uh, for those in the room that doesn't know about it, is to leverage the fast-growing market of mobile technology for scientific computing, HPC and data center. We have the usual timeline here and uh, the partners that are participating. Uh, the project is coordinated by Bull. Uh, BSC uh, is part of the um, research project here, uh, sorry, the research center here, and we have a good combination of uh, industries, uh, research center and academia. As I said, there are three phases. Uh, there have been three phases since 2011, and all the, so all these three phases have been uh, so three research line uh, in uh, in each of them. That's more or less have been going on in parallel. The first one is experiment with real hardware. We started with Android development kits in 2012 uh, for arriving to a production ready system that I'm going to present very soon. The other research line is push system software. Um, we started with uh, some system software in order to operate our clusters and uh, we arrived to more complex HPC code that I'm going to show you later. And why in this process of deployment this uh, platform, of course you learn from your say limitation errors and so on, so we always had this uh, study for next generation architecture going on in background. Okay, so let's move on and see what has been the shift between from the hardware uh, platform from the beginning to today. Uh, probably you already seen this, this uh, slide I already presented many times. So this is the first Mont Blanc prototype started deploying in, well, the project uh, in 2012, deployed in 2015. And this is purely mobile, I mean, the mobile technology. This is a note card that is a credit card form factor. Here you have, uh, uh, mobile SOC and Samsung Exynos Dual. And this just mobile technology based on ARM um, in a HPC envelope. And we started from here. By the way, this has been presented uh, last year in supercomputing. There, there is a paper with the evaluation of this machine. And we ended up here. And this is what we have today. And what you can see in the Mont Blanc booth, by the way. So uh, this is the uh, Bull-based uh, Sequana platform, including uh, 48 nodes with uh, dual socket Cavium uh, Thunder X2. And, and as I said, in the booth we have a board if you want to see it, and also if you want to know more details about the specs. So there has been a huge shift from mobile technology, so low-end technologies to high-end technology. This is, this is the trend within the project, and I think also within the market of uh, each, um, arming this in HPC. So let's see now about the system software. I, I, I see a similar trend here. We started building our own system software from recompiling, uh, hacking, and try to have all the things that you need in to, to run to operate your cluster. And what we have today is, uh, as, as uh, Chris already presented, is uh, products. We have things that we can, we can deploy in our, in our cluster in the form of, pro of product. We have different flavor of OS system. We have the ARM performance library, the ARM compiler, the Alinea tools, and everything is well packed in your OpenSPC. So I see here the same shift that we've got from a handmade system software uh, doing uh, hacking things in that this has been, that has shifted towards something that is uh, product types, uh, if you want. And um, of course, this is applied also for the HPC code. Uh, we started with simple benchmark, and now we can run, as, as Chris was saying, so you can pretty pay, uh, without huge pain run any uh, of your HPC code on this platform. So uh, also here, as I said, there, is, there has been this shift, and I think Mont Blanc contributed a little bit uh, in this um, ecosystem of software. Okay, so let's see this uh, study of next generation architecture. As I said before, um, <laughs> in doing all these hardware and software combination, you learn from your, your errors, right? Or at least your limitations. So uh, in the case where, where, where we were developing our first prototype with mobile technology, uh, there was this uh, idea of let's try to understand 
uh, try to gather data in the current prototype and then try to change, for example, in this plot, it was a COMD changing the uh, technology of the core that we were using and the, um, the network technology because the network in that, in that uh, prototype was pretty problematic. So, yeah, this was a little bit um, an attempt of uh, trying to simulate a next generation machine. And what we have today is what we call the multi-level simulation approach, MUSA, that I'm going to show you a little bit more later. But basically the idea is that you can trace your application in whichever HPC application you, ha um, uh, um, HPC platform you have, and then you can replay your, your trace in some uh, simulator and get the feeling of uh, and, and changing the architectural parameters. So get the feeling of how your application will behave in a, a different uh, hardware configuration. And uh, um, this is a more global uh, approach to the next generation architecture than the one that we had in, this, in the beginning. So also here I see a shift to something that is more comprehensive. Uh, very good, so let's see now, I said at the beginning that I'm going to show you the BSC point of view, the Barcelona Supercomputing Center point of view. So I'm going to talk a little bit the, the evaluation of solution, hardware solution and software solutions. Uh, here I want to mention that we have a poster uh, in the poster session that you can see today or tomor tomorrow, I think, is the poster session. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of data that are complementary to that poster, so I invite you also to check out the poster. And then use cases, I'm going to show you a little bit Alia and uh, uh, HPCG with two different goals. In Alia, we tested the runtime features that we want to push in OpenMP. As and uh, in HPCG, we try to improve the parallelization of the benchmark and also try to start a study uh, to targeting the uh, scalable vector extension, the SV that has been um, introduced before by Chris. As a last point, I want to give you a little bit more details about this uh, uh, sim um, MUSA simulation infrastructure. And uh, yeah, also here there was a paper last year uh, in which we presented the methodology. I just want to give you a little bit the update about this topic. Let's start. So the, the first evaluation I'm going to present is the unperformance library. We, test, uh, we tested an HPC code uh, making use of arithmetic and FFT libraries. We selected Quantum Espresso. We used GCC 710 and uh, we tested on uh, the, the AMD uh, Seattle, and the result for that, you can find it in the poster. What I want, I'm going to present here is the updated uh, version of that result for the Cavium Thunder X2. Uh, so here, in reality, the, the platform is not, not I mean, we are, we are evaluating at the same time the platform and the uh, performance library, right? So uh, in this plot, what I'm showing is that, so there are different functions in this uh, Quantum Espresso code, and basically there are, uh, two big families, so one is this callback and uh, the other one has, are all more or less FFT based. So here the message is that uh, in this callback, sorry, is uh, so you have mostly um, arithmetic or, or linear algebra functions, while in the rest is FFT. And uh, on the Y axis here you have execution time, so lower is better, and this normalized to the uh, R performance library. Okay, key message here is that whenever you have uh, um, arithmetic or, or linear algebra function like a callback, you are, at least in our experience, you, you, using the R performance library, you are outperforming um, uh, op OpenBLAS in this case by 30%. So that's a great result. On the opposite side, the FFT uh, has still some um, work to do, and so you have a little bit of uh, less performance here. But overall here, the message is that uh, if you use the, the um, uh, ARM performance library, you get very close performance to the, to the open blast. And if you couple the ARM performance library right now, we had the FFT, you get even better performance. So uh, takeaway message is uh, ARM performance library are great uh, as soon as you uh, use the um, arithmetic functions. And uh, you can couple it with the FFTW or, or we, just, we are working with, with Chris and the group of Chris for uh, improving the FFT part. So let's see the evaluation of the ARM HPC compiler. Um, here we took the last version of the HPC compiler, uh, the version 18.0, uh, uh, compared with the one of August, the 1.4, and we ran the polybench bench, benchmark suite. So this is a huge, it's pretty huge benchmark suite, and we ran it on, on Cavium Tender X. 
Here you get the relative comparison uh, between the new version and the old version, and uh, uh, so basically this is execution time, so once more, lower is better. And uh, this is, a, as I said, big benchmark suit, so you have to know what you are running, right? So here there are uh, especially these two um, benchmark, they are very small, but basically you see that you have a lot of improvement with these two uh, uh, benchmarks. Uh, these are the benchmarks that are more, um, um, say, um, important in the uh, HPC workload because they are scalable ve vector matrix uh, multiply and matrix vector transpose. So, um, takeaway message here is that with this new version, we see a lot of improvement. This is a, we are around 30% better performance for this kind of ben benchmarks. And another thing that we tried to have a look at is the level of, say, the auto-vectorization that you can get in this, in this, um, with this compiler. And here we get even better results because there are uh, two situations in which there was no vectorization with the previous version, and now we have uh, auto-vectorization that is improving a lot the performance. And also in the gem, in the gem here, you get pretty. Um, good uh, performance. Overall, in all the benchmarks, the, the, say the, the, vector, the auto vectorization is increasing about 8% is the number here. Okay, so um, very good job, I think, from at least our point of view, because everything that is related to HPC is improving version by version. You can, see, you can check out the details in the poster as well. And uh, very good, uh, also very good news about the SIMD, because we have to survive with SIMD and we have to shift towards the, the SVE. And these, these are good news for, for us that we have to use this machine. Okay, so now I start with the, um, the evaluation of the use cases. The first one, as I said before, the high, uh, high performance conjugate gradient. Uh, the problem is that if you get the reference code of the HPCG, basically you don't get uh, scalability because the OpenMP parallelization is uh, pretty poor. So we did this, uh, while well, we started this work uh, recently uh, after, after Eric uh, uh, commenting on our, um, say, not, not so big attention uh, towards the um, vectorization. So we decided to improve the OpenMP parallelization of uh, HPCG. Uh, we studied the current auto-vectorization that you can get in the, in the current HPCG implementation, of course, for leveraging, for leveraging uh, the SVE. And we analyzed the other performance limitation of the, of the benchmark, and especially cache, eff cache effects. So concerning the first, the improving the OpenMP parallelization, here I have on the left, the scalability that you get with the reference code, and basically zero, and the, the scalability that you get with, the, with our uh, code after touching a little bit the implementation, especially of the gauss uh, Seidel part. And you can see that not only we have better scalability, but using the ARM performance, sorry, the ARM HPC compiler, you get even better uh, figure of performance here. And well, this is just another way of seeing it. Every time that you see uh, white is because your, your CPU is in idle. And every time that you see some color, your CPU is doing something. So you can see that in our version, that is the one on the right, you have more activity, say. Um, okay, so uh, concerning the second point, uh, study the current uh, uh, auto-vectorization for leveraging SVE. We did uh, a sort of um, evaluation on the, on the Cavium Thunder X2 and on the Intel Xeon. Um, trying to simply count uh, the SIMD instruction of the compute SIMG S region. And of course, you have what you expect, that um, on the Intel you have way more um, auto-vectorization, and this is a clear sign that uh, we have to start leveraging the, the, the SV. So, and that's the reason, because we moved on in this study, and uh, we evaluated our code using the ARM instruction emulator, and we basically got the binary with SV instruction in it, and we said, okay, let's give this binary to the emulator and see which, how, so how many instruction we can get out of it. And the result is this one. So basically, uh, here I'm plotting on the y-axis the increment of uh, vector instructions um, for, for the, uh, on the x-axis I have the different, uh, the different vector size. And uh, the very good, there are two good news here. The first good news is that you get 
SV instruction, so auto vectorization, uh, a, a lot of instruction um, automatically out of the compiler. The second good is, um, uh, news is that this is scaling. Of course, if you have bigger and bigger vector size, you get less and less instruction. You could expect it, but it's not granted, right? So this is the first time that we try to quantify this, and we are pretty excited to see how this um, will behave. Um, of course, this is just number of instructions, so there is no concept of performance here because the ARM instruction emulator so far doesn't give us any uh, knowledge about the performance, but we are working on it. The last point about SPCG is the memory access evaluation. Uh, basically, what we did uh, is a sort of coloring technique, and whenever you start doing this coloring technique, you are, you are harming your uh, data locality. So and here you basically get the ratio of uh, miss ratio on the L, uh, L1 and L2 cache. This is just a measurement. Uh, this is just saying us that we did a, a little bit of work, but still have a lot of work to do. So what we are going to do is optimize the data access pattern in memory, but what would be even more important is to test this code um, with a simulator in which we will have uh, SV gather load, in which we could uh, take a lot of advantage of our implementation. Um, very good. So this is the use case, the HPCG use case. I'm moving out, uh, on now with the Alia use case. Alia is um, a finite element code that is developed within BSC. Uh, well, here is a trace, basically there are several phases in this code, I'm not going into details, but you can clearly see here that you have this uh, load unbalance. And um, yeah, this load unbalance is harming the performance, so we started to uh, um, try to understand what's going on there. There are uh, um, atomics operations that are harm harming the performance. So we try to implement three, well, two different implementation. The, the baseline is the non-coloring, in which we use atomics. The second one is using some uh, coloring technique. And the third one is using um, commutative multi-dependencies. I already presented this in the ARM uh, um, uh, Resource Summit, but I have an update here uh, that we, we run it on ARM now. So in the next slide, I am going to show you the results. Um, let me just clarify what comm commutative multi-dependencies are here. Basically, um, we tell the runtime that uh, he can update blue or red, but never blue and red at the same time. Okay, so basically you are saying you can do blue or red in the order that you prefer, but you cannot uh, operate on blue and red at the same time. So this uh, um, is our test and our evaluation that we did. So quantify the effect of the commutative de multi-dependencies and also the uh, dynamic load balancing technique that is another technique that is developed within uh, BSC and tested with our runtime. Um, the method that we used, we used the assembly phase of this ALIA code and we ran it on Mare Nostrum 3, the previous version of the uh, BSC supercomputer and on Cavium on Cavi Thunder X2 and here uh, sorry, Thunderx one. This is a uh, um, this is in-house, so we did it on on Thunderx one. So what I already presented at the, at the Arm Resource Summit is this one. So basically, in blue you have the non-coloring, in red you have the coloring, and in uh, uh, orange you have the OMPs with multi-dependencies. The takeaway message is we are plotting time here, so lower is better. So whenever you use coloring or OMPs, you get always better performance, whichever configuration you use of MPI um, processes and threads. And what is important is, is that if you combine this with the DLB, the dynamic load balancing, you get even better performance. So takeaway message here is that uh, we are working on techniques that are not only um, of benefits for ARM, and, uh, but, but, but we are pushing these techniques because we believe that there are things that we can do and uh, that can be of benefits for all next generation HPC machine. Um, okay, so I, I, I really wanted to show this plot because it's really a work in progress. We are getting data here. You see that we missed some column here because there are guys trying to uh, deploy this and run these this, uh, test cases right now. Um, so let's move on to the last uh, topic of my presentation, that is the multi-level simulation approach. Uh, as I said before, it's a simulation infrastructure 
split it in level. The first level is a trace generation. Basically, you have your application running on an HPC machine, and you instrument it, and you gather OpenMP runtime events, MPI calls, and uh, dynamic instruction, like, for example, number of accesses to the memory, and so on. And you gather all of this in a trace, and then you move on to the second level, that is the network simulation. You, then you can replay your trace, uh, find out which, uh, where are your MPI calls, and uh, you move to the third level in which you can uh, simulate the, just the um, workload, the compute part in the single node. And uh, combining these levels, we are able to simulate multi-level uh, multi parameters, architectural parameter, microarchitectural one, and uh, main memory. Uh, features, and it's like, um, for in my head, this is like changing the setup of your Formula One car, right? And every setup is different and gives you probably some benefit, hopefully some benefit, maybe some disadvantage. So uh, we are able to do this uh, with several architecture parameters and with uh, um, several uh, MPI configuration, sorry, MPI processes. Of course, we have the problem that simulation is uh, Simulation time is huge, so we have uh, different techniques for trading accuracy and uh, speed. Uh, this um, is just, as I said, an update. This has been presented in a paper last, last year in which we validated the methodology. We presented five applications, and uh, we proved the performance up to 16,000 16, MPI ranks. And the status update is that we added parameter sets, uh, so we expanded our say, space of research. We support power consumption modeling. We support several systems of uh, the top 500. And uh, we expand, we incremented the set of application. We extended uh, the trace database. And we included the support for uh, Dynamo Rio in order to get uh, our architectural data also on ARM platform. Of course, I have my compulsory final slide that is related to the student cluster competition that has nothing to do with the rest, but I stick <laughs> to give this message. Uh, it is not only business. It is not only uh, pushing one technology or another technology or installing huge cluster. It is also a matter of education. So I'm uh, the advisor of uh, the team of student clusters since 2000, 2015, and we've always participated with the uh, ARM-based architecture, our base clusters, and I think it is a great, great example of collaboration between industries, academia, uh, to give to these guys not only the idea of reasoning about performance, but also about energy, and, uh, and the collaboration has been always between uh, BSC, E4, Cavium, and ARM. And I have the last message that is, I submitted a proposal for a team, but I still don't have a cluster, so if there are people in the room having an ARM-based cl cluster to offer, please contact me. And I leave you here my, the, the, um, the coordinates to visit our booths. We are in the exhibition with the Mont Blanc booth where we have the, uh, pl the platform of the Mont Blanc Sequana board, and then we have Bull in the exhibition floor, BSC, and uh, several of other partners of Mont Blanc, and I'll be here all week. I don't know if there is time for a question. I see Roxana here, well, so. Let's take a quick question. If anybody wants just one quick question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, okay, let's thank the speaker. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.